Live from Madrid, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Madrid 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We're back in Madrid, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my colleague Peter Burris, co-host for the week, covering HPE Discover Madrid 2017. McLeod Glass is here. He's the Vice President of Product Management for Software Defined in the Cloud Group at yes. Hewlett Packard Enterprise, yeah. and he's joined by Ronald Bearway, who is a managing partner with the sourcing company. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. All right, thanks, thanks. For so I'm excited about this. We've been hearing about Azure Stack for a while now, and we've been talking about bringing the cloud model to your business for yeah. a while now, and it looks yeah. like it's here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, we're excited. I mean, you know, I think uh, we've worked hard, uh, you know, with Microsoft to pull together a, a, what we believe is a very uh, compelling solution with Azure Stack. Um, I think this gentleman here can attest to uh, the value behind it, but you know, we basically pulled together uh, a lot of capability or, and flexibility in the overall solution that allows our customers to be able to pull together uh, a solution that lets you take Azure-centric type services and run them on-premise uh, for you know, uh, maybe conditions where you have data sovereignty issues or you maybe have edge applications where you, you can't actually have the connectivity you need to, add to, to the Azure cloud. Uh, and be able to start building on those capabilities, so. Well, yeah. Ronald, I wonder if you could comment. I mean, it's interesting uh, to juxtapose, sort of, you know, the, the take the AWS strategy, which is, hey, get the cloud here, bring it all over. Microsoft obviously has an on-prem estate already, yeah. recognizes the customer need for that, and says, hey, right, we can bring substantially that cloud model on-prem. Um, why why does that appeal to you, and does it work? Well, actually, we do think that for the first time now, it's possible to, to get control of cloud. Uh, to us, um, it, it's the connection between the devices and, and the, uh, the Azure cloud, and Azure Stack to us is between in. And as a company, we do have control uh, for Azure Stack, but we can also give control to our clients for Azure Stack. So a user can decide to put things in the cloud, and the company can decide whether they go into the cloud or whether they stay into Azure Stack. So they have control of their data and they can keep control of their data. And on top of that, it's our hardware. So the, the data they decide to store on Azure Stack is on our hardware. And it's not a US hardware company, it's a Dutch hardware company. So I should have asked you up front, to talk about the sourcing company, what you guys yeah. do, what your role is. Well, we are a cloud service provider. Uh, we do deliver uh, cloud service to end users. We have a strong vertical focus. We do uh, lawyer companies, we do housing companies, and we do uh, care companies. And especially for the lawyer companies, we have uh, built our own proposition where we uh, connected uh, several applications together and uh, called Magistra, and that do we bring to uh, to, to companies, to, uh, to users. So the model is when you bring a solution on-prem, yeah. you bill it like it's a cloud, is that Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah, it's all paper use. Yeah. Okay, all describe that in a little bit more detail. I mean, well, what are my limitations of that paper Or use? what's different between the on-prem version and the non-on-prem uh, version? I can talk something about that. Well, we have an Azure Pack, which is just a form a system, a uh, cloud environment, we call it our legacy environment. Uh, that's in a paper month model. So we do report to Microsoft what uh, licenses are used, and we do that monthly. Azure and Azure Stack are different. Azure is uh, in a paper second uh, model, and Azure Stack is in a paper minute model. So, actually for the first time, we're also able to create more flexibility. Mm -hmm. in, if in our legacy environment, a, a machine is on for two minutes, we have to pay for it for a month. If we do the same in our Azure Stack environment, well, we have to pay for the minutes. Um, for example, at lawyer offices, uh, you have uh, people supporting the lawyers, and uh, well, they work for maybe 16, 20 hours a week, and you have <laughs> the lawyers themselves. <laughs> we'll try to, to but find they bill out. a lot more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they try to see if they can uh, put 100 hours in a week. <laughs> and, and, we're, and we're now able to, to create more uh, agility in that and to make it more flexible. 
And so you were early Azure Stack uh, yeah. customer. Yeah, we're three years in the Microsoft program now, and uh, we decided in March uh, on the airlift of Azure Stack to uh, acquire, uh, to, to, to buy it. Uh, Yes, so how's it working? Maybe take us through the, the journey. I mean, a lot, a lot of times the first Microsoft product doesn't isn't quite right, the second one starts to get really good, and then after it's mature, you know. Well, almost. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, our company was founded uh, almost 11 years ago, uh, and we always have looked into ways to uh, simplify our environment. We were founded on the state of mind Nairo, the business university, and we're not able to put any uh, servers over there, so we decided to put them in the data center, and that's what we now call our legacy cloud environment. Um, but in that road, we were always searching to simplify, to simplify our environment. And Azure Pack was a, a, a good step, but uh, a, a not, not good enough. And Azure Stack actually does simplify that. It's a, it's a box and, and nothing more than that. And if the box runs, then the box runs. And we decide when to update it, and we decide what to put on in it. And, um, and well, that helps us. And next to the simplification of our environment, we also wanted to uh, um, be able to, to uh, generate um, a more standardization. And with Azure Stack, you are um, forced to use uh, DevOps. Uh, the, 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 the best way to use Azure Stack is to, to create templates and um, with the creation of templates, uh, you, you have a DevOps environment. So that's also the biggest thing. So McLeod, okay, what are you guys bringing to the table? What is Microsoft bringing to the yeah, table? Yeah, so I mean, obviously over. we've got a long-standing re relationship, yeah. partnership with Microsoft. We worked hand-in-hand -hand with them on the solution. I mean, the, the first of all, it's based on ProLiant hardware, right, which we all know and love. Um, and the, but then we've also worked very hard to engineer this solution. One of the things that separates our, our um, configuration, our solution from some of the others is uh, the expandability. Like we allow you to scale it by node, so basically you can add individual nodes. We have some capabilities around adding different memory and different networking configurations that we support around that. Uh, and then also uh, wrapping some of our flexible capacity um, capabilities around that to allow a pay-as-you-go type of model, consumption model, um, very much in line with what he was talking about mm -hmm. earlier, um, that really kind of builds together a complete solution. Uh, and com the other thing that we've done is we've co-invested with Microsoft in, in what we call um, our uh, Azure Stack Innovation Centers. So there's one in Bellevue and uh, one here in um, uh, Switzerland, uh, mm -hmm. the, in Geneva, that allows uh, customers to actually go and test and, and leverage um, the great capabilities of our solution uh, in a controlled environment. They can actually go there and work with uh, uh, experts uh, and to kind of engineer their solution, or they can actually connect remotely uh, to those. So, and we've also spent a lot of time training a lot of individuals. Uh, I think uh, you know somewhere in the neighborhood of about 6,000 individuals uh, in the company uh, from a service and support standpoint to, to support the solution. So, uh, we were we're very excited about it. So, so as I understand it, you're you're a, you're a cloud service provider, you're a service yeah. provider. Yeah. So, how does how does this granularity provided by Azure Stack translate into a superior experience for your customers? Well, it simplified our platform. And while simplifying our platform, we, we have time up. And, and we can in that time, we can do other things. Um, well, if, if you look to Magistra, Magistra is a complete, complete workspace for, for lawyers. And, um, well, we are forced to keep it standard, uh, do it in a DevOps and, and keeping the template up to date. Um, so while doing that, we don't have to bother about the things below the template because that's taken care of by HPE and by Microsoft. Um, so that keeps that gives us time to to think of other things that helps lawyers, um, and uh, we like to think uh, in things what helps them uh, enable more productivity. For example, for a lawyer, it is uh, uh, absolutely a, f a thing to keep time writing uh, right. And uh, we just announced that we will uh, extract that time writing with uh, artificial intelligence, uh, keeping up what they do during the day, and at the end of the day, sells them, um, okay, you worked 48 hours, uh, for 48 minutes on, uh, on that document. We do think that's from that client, 
and uh, swipe to the right and uh, it's uh, accepted and uh, swipe to the left and uh, change it. And that things we like to do to, uh, to enable more productivity for our end users. So the advantages are at least uh, that you can now put more time and energy into uh, creating services. How do you go to market? Do you go to market? Is it uh, all self-service? Do you have a direct sales organization that's going out and meeting with law firms? H how do you sell your service? Um, the, the things we do most is uh, go to events and uh, sponsor events and tell people that the Magistra is there. Uh, and, and, and then uh, the second is one-on-one -on -one meetings. That's person to person, so you have people Absolutely that person actually to sell. Person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but we do think that we did put a lot of time in finding out what they need uh, and what what keeps them awake at night, and uh, and we did try to translate that into a software and into a, a product, Magistra, uh, what what helped them not being awake at night. But for many years, uh, one of the challenges of doing this approach for a partner like yourself was you want to present the solution to the customer in a form that they understand, but the underlying provisioning of the assets and ultimately the costs end up being presented in infrastructure and technology terms, which yep. means the salesperson's having a hard time, the customer's having a hard time. Does this kind of common, simplified approach allow the customer, the salesperson, and the business overall to use a common template to articulate and make, make commitments about what's going to be delivered, have conversations about what's needed, all of those things is just simplifying not only the technology, but the business and how the customer perceives value. Well, look at it this way, um, the implementation time is, is cut quite low, because uh, when we go to an office and ask them what software they want, well, we need at least two, maybe three months to implement that. But why we have think about the, the solution in Magistra, we, well, we just run the script. It runs for seven hours and then it's there. The environment is there. 21 servers are enrolled. Uh, the, the SharePoint uh, document management system is enrolled. Uh, the, 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 put, the things are put in place, uh, so the functionality is there. And maybe it's not answering all the functionality. Uh, maybe it's answering 60, 70, maybe 80%. But it's fast, and uh, and that's what they like. What are what, what 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 is keeping your clients up at night? To a lawyer, that we do think three things. Uh, they uh, want to have uh, a good office uh, functionality. To us, that's Office uh, 365. Um, they want to have a good document management system, uh, being sure that they are not uh, having two colleagues working uh, straight to each other on the same case, and uh, uh, time writing. Mm. And those three things uh, were the first we uh, enabled uh, in the Magista. McLeod, so what's your expectation for this business? I mean, you guys have it's been, yeah, I've been the market's been waiting for it for a long time, and it looks like it's here and ready to roll. Yeah, we're very excited. I mean, the interest has been very high, right. especially by, you know, with customers, uh, especially in the service provider space, uh, uh, and customers that are looking to deploy edge applications. That's been really where we've seen the most uptake kind of the, at the beginning here. Um, and also some of the other kind of common use cases are things like uh, areas where compliance or data sovereignty is a, is a uh, concern. Uh, and we're very excited about it. It's, yeah. it's, been, it's been great so far, so we're looking forward to it this year. Do you think other large cloud service providers, namely AWS, are going to have to respond with something like Azure Stack? Uh, uh, we think they will. Uh, I mean, I don't see how they could just let that big of a market go. Well, uh, look, But it's capitulating to the, to the dogma of everything has to be in the Here's cloud. what we know. You yeah. would presumably welcome that. If yeah. AWS can do say, hey, <laughs> we want to partner hey, with Hey, we believe HPE. the world is hybrid, <laughs> right? <laughs> the world is, the is, world hybrid, is hybrid, is going yeah. to be hybrid. This is not a belief. And that, yeah. It is. Yes. It, it is yeah. today, and there's not a lot of changes expected in the laws of physics yeah, yeah. that are going to change in the next couple of years to make it easier for AWS. Yeah. I think it's going to be the same basic physics. Yeah. So from, from that perspective, it suggests pretty strongly that while there's a lot of use cases, there's a lot of money to be made just on that central piece and then introducing new technologies 
like serverless and functional to approximate the ability to serve, but you can't do an office environment easily in a serverless computing world. It's just it's not, it's, it's not how it's going to work. Sure. So at the end of the day, a, you know, AWS is going to be able to do a great business doing what it does, because there's a lot of open space, but if they want to claim that it's everything, if they want to get everything, they're not going to do it by just claiming that this is all going to go well, away. I mean, this is, the TAM of, of this opportunity for HPE is, and Microsoft is quite large, yeah. right, I would think. Yeah. Oh, so, it's enormous. Anyway, I'd yep. be surprised if we don't see some kind they of They have to there. respond. Anyway, <laughs> guys, uh, last word on HPE Discover. What's the bumper sticker pulling out of the show? Uh, well, they have it, uh, it's, it's stable. They have it all uh, on the right uh, note. On the right path, okay. Hey, the right path, sorry. We're just continuing to make hybrid IT simple, and, you know, and, and you've seen more of it here at the show. There's been a lot of exciting announcements and a lot of the technologies that we're bringing together. Uh, Azure Stack's just one of many that, that we, uh, we've got in our uh, portfolio that we're extremely excited about. So. Gents, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. Yeah. It's a Thank pleasure you. to have you. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, buddy. Everybody, Peter and I will be back <laughs> after this.